Today on the Roundtable Perspective, Dr. Rand Terrell joins me to talk about social media and social movements, an important issue for us because 75% of teens are using some form of social media. We're going to look at the uh, 2012 uh, Quebec protests. Uh, Dr. Uh, Terrell studied at University of Toronto where he got his PhD and uh, he's going to compare that with uh, things that are going on in the United States right now. For instance, the Parkland shooting and the movement that's arisen from that. Welcome to the Roundtable Perspective. I'm your host, Tom Roach. I'm joined by my guest today, Dr. Ron Terrell, uh, to talk about social media and social movements. Um, Ron, uh, I, I know you're, uh, you did your dissertation on the, uh, uh, the student strike in Quebec in 2012, uh, and I thought we might uh, talk about that a little bit, but then uh, bridge into how that compares to uh, things that are going on in the United States right now. It might be interesting sure. to get a look from the outside here. Uh, so tell us about, what, what interested you about that strike? Okay, well, um, my main research interest has to do with social media and social movements, and at the time, um, it just seemed that it was a perfect uh, case study to look into because uh, it was one of the most powerful, or arguably in Canada anyways, the, uh, the most well-attended uh, social yeah. movement in, in Canada at the time. So, you know, so we, don't, we don't think about there being social movements in Canada. Everybody <laughs> seems so peaceful up there. Uh, right. Uh, you know, but uh, I guess you, you disagree every now and then, huh? Well... To, to be frank, I mean, in Quebec, uh, yeah. they so going back to their history, um, yeah. it's, it's their belief, it's their fundamental belief that education should be free and education is a public right, sure. is, is, a, is an individual right. So whenever the government attempts to increase their um, tuition, yeah. they tend to take to the streets. So that's and what the strike was then about. Then that's what the strike was about, okay. yes. So how did social media figure in that? Um, well, so my dissertation looked at all, all the different tactics that they used, yeah. but more specifically their use of social media. And I interviewed the organizers to get a, an in-depth and more nuanced understanding of yeah. how they were actually um, doing it. And so they were using social media as a platform to organize as well as to disseminate information and also to use it to counteract um, the disinformation that they would they would say sure. from from the government. So did they have a you know a, a plan? Were they taking this out of a book? Were they making it up as they went along? Actually, what do you think? Yeah, well, they're they're quite savvy in that they looked back at previous um, uses of, of of tactics in general. Yeah, and they also had time to organize. It wasn't like the government didn't implement the the tuition fee increase right away and right. they had they had a year or so to to actually organize and, yeah. and, and think things through so they were very um, they were very tactical and, and very yeah. smart in, in, in the way they did it so, but obviously there were yeah. there were they were able to um, to change things as, as needed and adjust, well, and so adjust what were yes. some of their key moves? Absolutely. Um, okay so w one of the things that they did initially as, as with most social movements they were ignored. Sure. You know, to try and try and placate, you know, and, and just ignore them and not give them any um, any airtime, any any kind of credibility. Yeah. So, what they started doing was they started to attend any government function, like a speech uh, or something. Yeah. Any kind of speech, any yeah. anything that had to do that was governmental, they started showing up and disrupting, and I and see. chanting and, and and making their voices heard. And from that, the the media they sound like Americans to me. <laughs> a little bit. So yeah. so so from that, the uh, the media started to take notice yeah. and then started to ask some questions, you know, yeah. and what was you know what was the purpose and and so for example. Well, now that's a very traditional thing to do, though. I mean, that goes back to the anti-war movement here, the civil rights movement, you know. Right. Um, right. Absolutely. So yeah. so that speaks to again the the fact that they had the time to organize and, yeah. and develop these strategies. So, but they were coordinating that by communicating through social, social media, media. Yeah, yeah, because it was a, it was the fastest way to do it, and yeah. as well as on you know face to face and sure. 
they were using pretty much everything that was within right. their means to. So then if they, if they um, acted up at one of these events, yes. they could also, of course, uh, using their phones, uh, video what they were doing Absolutely. and then they could spread that out and uh, post it posting. online and prior to the social movement uh, I mean social uh, media um, Movements were dependent on news media coverage. Yes, and um, you know one of the one of the standout events um, That I'm familiar with because I, I grew up near Chicago was in uh, 68 the, at the Democratic Convention okay. um, there, there were anti-war protesters there and um, the uh, Chicago police um, were ordered to remove them from, I think it was Grant Park, and they, you know, pulled out their clubs and were beating people and dragging them off, and uh, and there were, you know, everybody kind of knew this was going to happen, mm -hmm. um, and so there were there were all these uh, camera crews around, and while these protesters were being clubbed and dragged off, um, they were chanting, "The whole world is watching. The whole world is right. watching," and. You know, and it, it, you know, they they actually managed, even though they didn't have social media, right? They mm -hmm. managed to get their message out by doing essentially what your group started out doing. But today, the whole world doesn't need to be watching, does it? They, uh, right? I mean, they, they can actually uh, get their message out on their own. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting because I, I didn't realize that that's where Gitlin's. Um, yeah, Todd Gitlin's uh, published uh, his first right. book with that title. Yeah. Okay, so I, I did yeah. not know that's what yeah. that's where that came from, but yeah, that, that is interesting. Yeah. But yeah, I, I definitely draw on Gitlin a lot, um, you know, f and, and a lot from the '60s yeah. movement, and particularly his his theory in that it was a symbiotic relationship between between the students and the media. You know, the, yeah. the students creating spectacles for the media to then report on. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that the the Quebec students did the exact same thing. Yeah. In that sense. So social media has given them more uh, control. It's given them more access, right? Absolutely. Um, because social media then, as opposed to traditional media where it's, yeah. it's, it's a one-way sort of communicative right. thing, um, you know, social media allows them to not only challenge certain uh, narratives, but also to promote their yeah. own side of the yeah. story. Yeah. Right, and tell their own side of the story with you know in their yeah. own terms. Yeah, I think I um, you know every week I get postings that people went to you know t attended something or you know were at the women's march or something mm -hmm. and they um, uh, you know they're posting up, posting on Facebook and other people are you know sharing it. Um, so it, it's uh, it's sort of become its own news network. Um, did you look at how this sort of um, devalues the actual news coverage? I mean, have you have you thought about that at all? Um, that wasn't part of of my study. Yeah. Um, no, but I, I would say that there have been, like I, I have read studies in that it doesn't necessarily devalue because news media have now also uh, moved over to, the, to using yeah. social media sure. and it helps amplify their messages as well. Yeah. Um, and not just that, it gives them instantaneous coverage. Uh, yeah. where, where in, as before, you know, they'd have to wait until that particular time or breaking right. news, that kind of thing. But now, with, with the use of social media, their, it, you know, their yeah. news messages are instantaneous as well. So when you're interviewing these, uh, these people uh, the organizers. who, who organize this, yeah. Um, you know, how, do they, how, how, were they, how did they feel about what they were doing? Did they, they see themselves as innovators? Did they? OK, uh, so yeah. the, the, I interviewed seven different individuals. Everybody had a different, obviously, take on it. But so, for example, one of them was became a politician right after. So, so sure. he was using it as a platform to yeah. to build up his his political career, and um, he, you know, he was able to do that, and and he 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 merged. With, did he get elected? He did. He, yes. he merged with the um, the Parti Quebecois, and they they made it into office, and were able to uh, get the the Liberals out at the time. And so whereas, he, wait, wait, wait. He wanted to lower tuition, but he ran against the Liberals. Because the liberals were in, in charge at the time. Oh, I see. And they were the okay. ones who wanted to increase. I see. Right. Okay. Right. So he, right. he joined the party that was opposing that. Okay. Uh, and, and they won the election, largely because of, of the, the student strike, actually. Interesting. And, but the majority of the other ones were just, you know, regular students uh, and who were, who were politically motivated, yeah. obviously. And, um, and to a person, they would do it again. Yeah. Guaranteed. Even though it, you know, there was a lot of hardships involved and a lot of time and it it was over a span of a few months yeah 
So, well, so what were they using? Uh, was it, you know, obviously they were using Facebook. They were tweeting. I would yes, guess, right? So they were using Facebook. They were tweeting. They were they, they were using you know mail. They were they were holding uh, dances. They were they were sending out flyers. They were doing a lot of fun things. Like for example, like innovative things. Yeah. For example, they they went to uh, one of the universities. They stuffed it with balloons. Like this, this hall, this this main meeting hall, they stuffed it with balloons, so it was inaccessible. It became inaccessible for all the students right. to come in, you know, who wanted to break yeah. the strike. So things of that and then it nature made, made for good images to send absolutely. out. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. On Facebook, I yeah. see. Very, very good. Um, so um, with with traditional um, news media, um, it's it's been uh, uh, postulated that there are certain filters that. Mm -hmm. um, that keep some things from okay. airing, right? Yes. And uh, you know, I'm referring to um, uh, the five filters. filters of media. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, do you want? Can you talk about that a little bit, and then sure. talk about how that uh, relates to, uh, to okay. social media? Yep, yeah, absolutely. Okay. So um, the five filters of media by Herman and Chomsky uh, indicates that, uh, contrary to what what many yeah. many people believe, that yeah. there is no. Li it's impossible to have a liberal media because there, you know, you have ownership, you have flack, you have, you have these five filters that news needs to go through in order for it to be right. presented to the public. Right. Uh, and, and, and Chomsky has a very um, negative view of, uh, of how we mediate our messages in, the, in well, this country. But, but, yes, but, yeah, it has a very particular but, view. But the concept, <laughs> the concept is interesting. So yes. whether or not his filters are the actual filters, the, the, the filters are things like uh, ownership, ownership. Mm -hmm. Well, it was it was developed way back when, yeah. so that one of them was communism. Yeah. Um, and so, if you're a communist, your message flag. is less likely to go through. If you're attacking something that the company that owns the television station is right. invested in, that's less likely to go through. Right. So, primarily, it it had to yeah. do with, like, for instance, um, ABC and Disney are, are affiliated. So, if Disney did something that was diabolical, for example, right. um, it would be. You yeah. know, in ABC's best interest to not then report on these things. Yeah. So, um, so there are filters now, but we got a different set of filters now yes. for social media, though, right? Um, actually, there has not been a, a, a template created, yeah. and I well, am very interested. Well, in, well let's in, create in work, one. I mean, in working on that, yes. What do you think? Definitely um, pulling from pulling from Chomsky and 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 Herman's um, ideals, but you know, modifying it to suit. To yeah. fit in with social media, I think that would be a really interesting project. Well, so I mean, if I, you know, if I want something to go viral, right? Mm -hmm. um, what's what's what, what would you recommend I do? What would you recommend I not okay, do? Okay, so that is a big question that's being bandied about because, for example, if marketers knew how to make things viral, right. they would do it all the time. Right. But right. there are no guarantees. Right. That you know, it it's there's no set. Uh, Pattern, I guess, that you could you could follow in order to make things go viral. They just, you know, they just do. Yeah, yeah. So, well, so um, how, how would you um, um, compare how social media was used in Canada with how it's what role it plays in the United States? I know we talked about you know, uh, okay, some some, some <laughs> things from the you know pretty pretty far back, but mm -hmm. um, you know we had the. Uh, Occupy Wall Street, Occupy yes. Chicago movements not that long ago. Sure. Uh, there's some other things that are going on. What's your, what's your take between the two, two nations here? I believe that social media is an extension of reality. So if, if social media is, is, a, is an extension of reality, then social, American social media is an extension of American society. Right. You know, Canadian social media is an extension of Canadian society. So in looking at it in those terms, I would say one of the main things that I've been noticing yeah. Um, since I've been here, is uh, the the discourse, uh, the, the types of discourse that that Americans have as opposed to Canadians. Because I would, you know, although not all the time, but I would like to think that the back home we have a uh, more, I guess, amenable kind of discourse where yeah. where you know people are willing to exchange ideas in a you know in a particular manner. Whereas here, I th I find that a lot of people already have their minds made up and, and a per, have a particular right. ideology or mindset that uh, sort of shuts down, shuts down the, the conversation in a way. Yeah, so, uh, you know, uh, th that's interesting because when I think about um, changes that I, that I seem to have seen in social media, it seems that, um, going back to this last election, um, 
this last presidential election. There were a lot of um, messages that really weren't part of a dialogue. They were just sort of representing an argument. They weren't giving the argument, they were representing the argument. There right. were things that were just sort of symbols like, you know, like the wall or, mm -hmm. um, you know, whatever. Um, and I didn't, I, I don't remember there being a lot of give and take debate on things. Even if, even if, you, even if you look at the presidential debates as they were on TV, um, once it got to be, you know, to be the debate between the Republican and the Democrat, um, it was just sort of like representing arguments rather than actually right. following through with them. Is, is that the kind of difference you're seeing? Yeah, more, even even more uh, more so. I would say there there are a lot of attacks, almost like attacking yeah. the other side, attacking the other, um, you know, the other ideas and and diminishing as opposed to perhaps even listening and you know trying to yeah trying to come up to with a with some sort of uh, you know solution that's, that's yeah. amenable to both. So if I were to say that uh, social media isn't conducive <laughs> to uh, debate, uh, that would really be more of a comment about how we're using it here than necessarily than how it's being used uh, uh, around the world. Perhaps, I, I, yeah. would, I would think that that would be, that would have some validity to it, yes. Yeah. Um, however, with that being said, uh, I mean, drawing, fr drawing from uh, current happenings, there, there seems to be some, some sort of discourse. You know. Well, yeah, I suppose there is. Mm -hmm. um, um, so, what are some typical posts that you, you know, that, would see? Well, because of the recent events, I've been following a yeah. lot, and, yeah. and actually thinking of a project that that patterns itself to yeah. um, to to unfortunately, you know, the unfortunate things that that, that have happened recently in in Florida. But uh, so the uh, yeah the Parkland uh, yes, school the shooting. Yeah. So in looking at how social media has um, amplified the voices of the, of of the students, um, it you know it to me it it sort of begs the question how what role can social media play um, in helping these students in what they're trying to accomplish. Yeah. Uh, Obviously, it's going to help them organize, and it's going to help them coordinate. So no, I, uh, let's take that solely. So how does it help them organize and coordinate? Well, uh, well, for example, um, Emma Gonzalez, the the young girl who was on national news networks, um, yeah. well, her speech was very powerful, and I, I would argue that right now it's gone viral. So yeah. people are, are watching it, and and like-minded individuals are are hearing. Um, what she has to say, yeah. and they're now talking about um, doing a walkout. They're actually talking about uh, meeting with their with their Congress people or their, their yeah. senators, and 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 that kind of thing. So perhaps that'll galvanize the movement somehow. Yeah. So so essentially, uh, you know, I, you know, it's a interesting point to make that some of what goes out through social media is just intended for the. Um, the insiders almost, right? The, sure. the people that you're trying to rally. Absolutely. And then there are other messages that are going out to the people that maybe you're arguing with or you're, or you're trying to sway, right? Right, because yeah. uh, I've also seen a lot of pushback. Well, I wouldn't say a lot, but, but some pushback on, on the students. Um, I've, I've read tweets from specific uh, conservative, again, politicians who are saying, yeah. there's no way these students are able, are capable of organizing on their own, so it must be George Soros funding them or yeah. the Democratic people uh, leading them on, yeah. and so that kind of I. Well, you know. so you're an expert on that. I mean, you know, do you oh. think there's any way for them to organize <laughs> this on their own? Oh, absolutely. I, I believe that they can organize it on their own. But what the the, the more prevalent yeah. question that I've yeah. been asking is, yeah. will their changes will change actually be implemented? Well, yes. So um, that's the bigger question. But, but okay, so, they, so using it for organizing, yes. good. Then, then what's, and what's another? Yes, um, but in, in yeah. terms of actually changing people's minds, and I don't know if it'll have that effect. I yeah. think that's you know, yeah, that remains to be seen. Absolutely. Um, have you seen um, a, a social movement on social media that changed people's minds? Do you have an example of that? Um, no, <laughs> actually, I, I'm talking about just just no because. No. However, what I have seen is an example. Um, there was a teacher, and she was on so, on one of the one of the networks that was shown on social media, yeah. where she had this uh, belief, a previous belief that you know, she was 
absolutely pro NRA, pro gun. But after the incident, um, she's now questioning. Actually, right. she's not just questioning. She's anti. Um, yeah. She believes that there's no reason that any individual should yeah. have. Of course, we don't know where she's getting her information, but yeah. yeah. Well, well, she was there. She was there during the, oh, I see. the, the incident. Yeah. So yeah. that's what she's saying now. She's, so that yeah. has changed her mind. Now, her going on social media and trying to promote this, I'm not entirely sure if that would yeah. affect people. Well, I mean, there have been social movements that were successful, obviously. Sure. Um, but I'm just, I'm just trying to think of something that was just mostly uh, um, done through the media. Through social media. Yeah. You know, um, I think it's, it's too early yeah. um, to, to be able to, to pinpoint. Think of the Arab Spring, for instance, right? Sure. I mean, where, where has that left us? You yeah. Know, I mean, it, it looked very hopeful at first. Right. I mean, social media does, has played a part, but yeah. in terms of crediting it and or, you know, yeah. Well, yeah, I guess there could be, you could say there was more going on there. Yes. Um, so um, let, let's just uh, look at it from more from a, a business standpoint here. Okay. Um, what's your take on on Facebook? It's gone through some uh, changes, uh, you know. And actually, we started out with something called uh, MySpace, right? Right. And, uh, and mm -hmm. that that went out of favor, and Facebook came in. How's this evolving? What what do you see there? Okay, well, I think it's it's very difficult to predict which platforms will actually be successful. Um, yeah. At this stage, you know, uh, we were discussing this earlier, but the younger people are are sort of leaving Facebook because it's not cool anymore. Yeah. But the fact that Facebook uh, probably is, because people my age are on it, and we, we killed it. Right? Maybe, yeah. but the yeah. fact that it's so ingrained in society, not just in North American society, but you know, all around the world for, yeah. for various reasons. Um, it would be, it's difficult for me to imagine um, it dying out in any, any time soon anyway. Uh, so in terms of the business application, uh, I think it's doing quite well in that if you're looking at, uh, you know, it's, it's obviously worth hundreds of billions of dollars now. So it is, but I don't think it's <laughs> making hundreds of billions of no, dollars. Is no, it? Yeah. no, but it's, it's essentially if, if you were to listen to um, some of the political economists who, who comment on social media, such yeah. as uh, Christian Fuchs, who would argue that we are the ones being sold to the advertisers. Yeah. So that's how Facebook makes its money. Um, without actually doing anything because Zuckerberg created the platform wherein yeah. we are the ones doing the immaterial labor. We're the ones pu putting up our pictures. We're the ones uh, commenting. We're the ones liking. We're the ones doing all the actual labor right, right. and not getting you know, any, any monetary uh, right. compensation for it. Yeah. And yet, on the other hand, we're also being sold as the commodity to, to the advertisers. So it's a really interesting uh, theory. Yeah, it's almost like someone provides a theater and then we just walk in randomly and take turns on the stage, right? Sure, yeah. yeah. I, 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 I wonder if there's a, um, a model for that anywhere else uh, historically. I, it's interesting. So he's facilitating our communication. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, so is it, do you think it's conceivable that somebody could do that better? That someone, you know, another... Uh, a better Facebook? Another Facebook could come along? Um, sure, why not? I mean, the technology is, is obviously constantly evolving and constantly yeah. changing and improving yeah. so it, but again i think that we're so uh, invested yeah. in facebook at this stage yeah. that it would be hard for another platform to take over so you don't want to take this opportunity to announce that it's doomed and <laughs> predict uh, uh not just yet no, okay. although you know snapchat and and, and yeah. other 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 platforms are uh, instagram are, yeah. are more popular with the younger crowd, so who knows, yeah. maybe in five, 10 years. Yeah, what do you use the most? I use Twitter a lot because I wanna keep, I, I keep, I try to keep on top of, of certain uh, news items and, and, and keep in the loop from certain individuals right. like our president. Yes. Yes. Okay, and, things interesting. and, uh, and you're, you're uh, teaching at Purdue Northwest now. Yes. Um, and we're happy to have you. Um, oh, thank you. Uh, have you used any of this in your class? I know you're talking about it in class. Oh, absolutely. Do you, do yeah. you tweet your students? Oh, <laughs> well, one of, uh, actually, one of the exercises that I, I just conceived recently was we, you know, we're, we were talking about uh, algorithms. Yeah. So we looked at how social media, you know, has an effect. So I had 
everybody Google themselves just to see what was yeah. out there and you know yeah. what kind of information we had yeah. and. Um, yeah, and that was, it was a really interesting uh, exercise. Well, we should recommend that to our viewers. Uh, <laughs> Google yourself and uh, see, what, see what you come up with. Um, okay, that's all the time we have for our program. Uh, thank you to Dr. Ron Terrell for joining me today on Roundtable Perspective. I'm Tom Roach. See you next time.